There is no doubt that poverty kills more people on this planet than anything else. No doubt. It either kills people directly or indirectly. And in fact, on any given day, about 19,000 children die because they were too poor to live on any given day. By the way, another way to illustrate this is if you live in an impoverished country in the world, your average lifespan is in the neighborhood of 39 to 43 years. If you live in a wealthy country in the world, your average lifespan is from about 77 to 81 years. And again, this is the direct and indirect result of poverty. So that's one of the reasons why these figures are so important. Not only because uh, it's somewhat immoral to have this many people living in this kind of poverty and suffering for a good part of their lives when there is, in fact, so much wealth on this planet, but just knowing that so many people are at risk of dying young simply because they're too poor to live. It's probably realistic that there will always be some sort of inequity. You know, I think the world, um, you know, there will be different stratas, but when we talk about eliminating poverty, we're saying, you know, people who have, who go to bed every night hungry, who don't have access to clean and safe drinking water, who don't have basic access to basic, um, you know, life necessities. I think that's where we think we can eliminate extreme poverty, people living at uh, below what is necessary for a, a reasonable um, life um, existence is what we think is possible. We know what it takes. I think there's more will than ever before. Uh, and I think if we put the right resources and the right programs and the right policies together, it's achievable. But I think it's important that we do it in a way that brings um, not only NGOs like CARE to the table, but governments, private sector. It's going to take all of us if we're going to have that kind of impact. Right now, the UN is, is updating the Millennium Development Goals. You might know in the year 2000, the UN came up with these eight focused strategies for trying to address poverty over the, uh, of a 15 year period of time. And in many ways, they've been a very powerful uh, point of focus and effectiveness for addressing poverty. But there was a tremendous mistake uh, in that uh, the Millennium Development Goals did not mention at all the problem of violence. And so we're simply urging that now as those Millennium Development Goals are being rewritten, to just make sure that we don't make the mistake again. So let's embed in some way a mainstream focus of addressing violence. Well, you know, in the U.S., we still have the, the legacy and still today have residual practices of, of blacks being oppressed uh, and being discriminated against. And that's part of uh, the inequality problem between whites and blacks. The same is true in other societies where there are some ethnic groups that are systematically being persecuted by the majority ethnic group that is in power. And that creates huge inequality, not only in economic resources, but also, of course, in the threat to life and person that is caused by potential for violence. So that's the kind of inequality that I think can be clearly addressed by the rights discussion that we're having here, is let's, let's at least get rid of that kind of inequality by recognizing that, that equal rights for all, protection of minorities, uh, even a, a democratically elected majority cannot be allowed to tyrannize a minority. There are always basic individual rights that cannot be violated even by a democratically elected majority. This is a struggle that's going to have to be owned by the local community, and that's the way it has become uh, transformative and sustainable in history. What's also true is that there are ways for external forces to play a positive role. Again, it could be a family that you might decide to help, or put a child through a school, or help a village. If everybody with the capacity to do something, in fact, did something and didn't use the fact that, well, I can't tackle the whole world as an excuse, we'd really get a lot done. Americans have always been generous. It's the roots of our organization with the care package. Uh, you know, one day we're enemies, the next day we're sending food to people uh, because, because we care and because we're generous. And I think, you know, we, um, as, a, as a nation of people who are kind, humane, it's part of our humanity, and I think it's the right thing to do. And I think um, you can think about self-interest issues, but I think at the end of the day, it's because it's the right thing to do.